Okay, see Linda's law of videos increasing and decreasing intervals for the trig function. I told you in the last video that a scholar presented me with this problem and then her solution. And as I worked mine out, I got the same answer, but I got it in a totally different way. So I wanted to present this the way I would have done it. Uh, the way that she did it was she used the product to sum formulas from trig and simplified f of x. I'm not going to do that, if you don't mind. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to use the product rule here, and I'm just going to say, I just when I do product rule, I just set up my list. So f of x is sine of x, f prime of x is cosine x, isn't it? g of x is equal to cosine x. The first derivative of cosine x, of course, is opposite sine x. And this list right here is just me building my product rule. So I'm gonna, I know I'm going to use my product rule. So I'm going to take f of x, which is sine x, times g prime of x, which we saw was negative sine x. Remember, we're multiplying here. Plus g of x times f prime of x. Right? And just so you know, the first derivative, d dx of 5 is 0, so I just, I'm going to drop that, if you don't mind. So here's my f prime at x as I clean this up. Sine x times negative sine x is equal to opposite sine squared x plus, and cosine times cosine, of course, is written cosine squared x, right? Remember, cosine times cosine is cosine squared x, right? So there is my first derivative. So what you could do is you could try to figure, you could, try to do this in a lot of ways, it turns into a bloodbath if you're not careful. But what I did was I decided I would put this all in terms of sine, uh, all in terms of cosine. So what I'm going to do here is this. So I'm going to say that f, of, f prime at x is equal to the opposite. This negative sign is this one. And I know from my trigonometric identities that, right, we have sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. If I just rearrange this, I can solve for cos, I can solve for sine squared x, and that would be 1 minus cosine squared x, wouldn't it? Is me cleaning, I'm replacing this with this. This plus sine is this one, and this cosine squared x is this one. So far, so good. I'll distribute this through here into here. And I'll say that my f prime at x is equal to um, negative 1 plus cosine squared x plus cosine squared x. If you don't mind, I'll clean that up again. Cosine x plus cosine x is 2 cosine, is 2 cosine squared x's. So 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And remember... To have a critical value, we have to have f prime at x equal 0 or be undefined. I know that it's not undefined anywhere because cosine is not is, cosine is defined everywhere for all x values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this equal to 0. And as I start to do my algebra, I'll add 1 to both sides, and I'll divide both sides by 2, and I'll get cosine squared x is equal to 1 half. Now, this is where it does get a tiny bit dicey, and you have to kind of think your way through it. Remember, this thing is squared, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Here, this really it will help you to know some trig, but cosine squared x, the square root of that would just be cosine x. Remember that this is the same as square root 1 over square root of 2, which is square root of 1 over the square root of 2. Please remember that we are not allowed to leave a radical in the denominator, so we have to rationalize the denominator by doing this and we get square root 2 over 2 is square root 2 over 2. So I got there, and I was like, okay, this makes perfect sense. And then I looked, and I'm like, I'm missing some answers. Remember that when you take the square root of something, it's plus or minus that thing, isn't it? It's plus or minus that. So I'm looking for square root of 2 over 2, and I'm looking for any cosine values that are square root of 2 over 2. So, so maybe you're going, what the, what the crap? Well, what I'm going to do now is just show you this on the unit circle where this shows up. So here's our unit circle, and it shows up at, these are the cosine values, right? At 7 pi force, it shows up at pi force. It shows up at 3 pi force and 5 pi fourth. So that's how we run that thing down. So 
I'm not going to bother you with setting up all the intervals like I did in the last video, but I just want to show you that there are often more than one way. So if you get stuck on something and you're like, oh my gosh, this is probably one of those trig rules. If you don't know the trig rule, this still will work out using product rule. So just follow good math and you'll get a good answer, I promise. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Thanks, I really appreciate it.